So I took a little deep dive on the Google Maps to see all what's going on over in this area that you can see right over here. And I've done videos a while back and it had to do with the killing stone and it breaking and the ritual that was done uh, with the Super K or Super Cameo Conde neutrino detector to trap and hunt neutrinos. However, they have been hunting these for a long time. So I think we should look into it a little bit more and why all these observatories are located where they are and what exactly do they do with these detectors that are with CERN and the Deep Underground Neutrino Experiments. And the first one happened to be uh, the Deep Underground Muon detector called Demand, the ORCA and the Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory in the Antarctica base. So there's a lot to unravel here and what these detectors do with these neutrinos and these reactors and cosmic rays. Why are they always in gold mines? What is it about gold mines? That's what I'm very curious to know. Now we all know that gold has many properties. So that's very interesting. And many of these are actually underwater. They're not just in caves or deep underground. They're actually in deep underground marine bases as well as military bases. And how interesting is it that the first neutrino that touched down at the South Pole Iceberg Observatory was at the time when they had the strange shutdown with the Sunspot Observatory. I find that quite fascinating. What do you think about that? Well, if you're ready for a deep dive, let's go. So let's go back to Devil's Hole in Nevada by Groom Lake in Area 51. How does this connect to CERN and Fermilab? Well, Batava, Illinois was the first groundbreaking that they did before CERN brought over a large part to have the Tevatron and the deep underground neutrino experiments known as Dune. And they have this strange ritual that they do. And it always seems very demonic. And they happen to take this rock or have this rock in front of the location at Batava, Illinois, where Fermilab is, aka CERN. And what's interesting about this rock formation, it goes into the layers on this rock and showing the age of it. But the rock is just really formed in a very odd shape. And there's a tail that goes with this, a, a very strange but yet consistent folklore tale that people have talked about, where a young lad comes upon this rock and sees a giant, and he lassos this chain rock around this giant, which was the devil. And when the devil wakes from his slumber, he gets up and he realizes he can't free himself. And of course, this is a folklore, but the reason why the shape of the rock is this way and bigger at the top and, and smaller at the bottom is because the devil walk, walked in circles over and over and over in circles and around and around this rock. And there is a chain there. Now, they don't know if it's the original chain. The sign, obviously, you cannot read it to this day. However, anybody who knows about this rock tells it the story exactly this way. So what would this devil's rock, devil's hole, and neutrinos have anything in common? Well, there's a lot. And it has to do with them trying to find and hunt them to know the location of where they came from. Is this contact? And just saying it in a different way? Now we got to get into the sundials and the sun and what they're doing with these things and the connection to Georgia Guidestone's explosion and the explosion at the Hoover Dam. All of this about time, how it sped up, we lost some time by seconds and people feeling that time is speeding up. And this technology race war and how the quantum computer needs gold and how all of this 
is usually found in gold, abandoned gold mines. So let's get into these underground caves, uh, things that we are not aware are under our feet, and these gold mines around the world that they have put these neutrino, what they call neutrino hunting, um, dune, the deep underground neutrino experiments, and the elements with the magnetic fields, and this gets into like the X-Files, but it's real. The elements with water are the purest form of water and why water is so important to capture neutrinos. Water is very forceful and it's used for many things as, and they, they found this in the pyramids that they say over in Egypt, but people are saying that the Hoover Dam actually was a pyramid as well. And there's pyramids everywhere. And this was from ancient civilization. And this is why there's so many secrets with the Masons and the 33. I do find it quite interesting that the truth does reveal itself if you have the eyes to see and want to explore. Now, People have always said that the Masons worship the sun or the sun deity. And I did not know until the Hoover Dam had um, a small fire explosion. Well, I knew a little bit about it, but I never really went down the rabbit hole into what is there. And I've always wanted to, but all my research with neutrino hunting and these dune, these deep underground neutrino experiments, locations and observatories has brought me to this. So here we are again with the water. Our dive is getting deeper. We're halfway through the video. Do you think about this being a Stargate? Have you ever heard about this being a Stargate? And this neutrino hunting with the neutrino um, astrology in the beginning of the video, I had some images on that. It's very interesting how the hunting of these neutrinos, the first touchdown of the neutrino in the South Pole, in the um, Ice Cube Observatory, being the date that it was, and the date that Sunspot Observatory closed, and the Sunspot Observatory, all in itself in that location. There's so much that we can figure out free energy and understand this. Now here we get back to the chains, these rocks and chains. You know, the, the stone that had um, the rock, the rock that had the chain around it that supposedly, you know, had the devil, you know, connected to it. What is it with the brotherhood and, or sisterhood, whatever you want to call it, the Masons and their worship of deities and their secrecy? Well, I think we know the secrets are out. And the myths that they believe in, as far as the Killing Stone and the Super K with CERN and the ritual they had over there in Japan, and now they're having um, what they're saying, tests of missiles because of Nancy going over there and visiting. Well, ever since this stone, you know, split in half, their myth about this stone and demons or demon being released is very interesting. So look here, look over here, but don't look here is what I'm thinking because they do have the Super K over there, which is in another abandoned uh, deep cave or mine. And they're firing that thing up. And with these neutrinos, they also can do these beams and lasers and LIDAR. And this space race you know, I'm beginning to think it's an underwater 
marine race with submarines and portals. I know it sounds crazy, but they're saying they found them. And these ley lines, the 33 ley line, and the magnetic anomalies that follow it. It's obvious that magnetics and the United States does make the largest magnets. And with the third run of CERN being fired up and going, and what our sun has been doing with the CMEs or the earth facing coronal mass ejections, magnets are causing many things. And maybe with the Oort cloud and the VP 2012, nicknamed Biden, way back when he was vice president in 2012, I'm thinking the possibility with the Oort cloud being consistent of icy pieces and formations of different things is the wormhole that the James Webb telescope has seen what the North and South Pole being the toroidal field and on top of each other and that magnetic anomaly there, are they trying to get to the Oort cloud? Or is the Oort cloud coming to us with VP 2012 and the planetary alignment? Okay, well this rabbit hole takes me back to Sunspot Observatory, the closure. Was it because of a neutrino touching down in the South Pole Ice Cube Observatory? Is it coincidental? What do you think? Seriously has me wondering with the mirrors and the holographic projections of Fermilab or the holometer, if you've not heard of that, and the James Webb Telescope and its large mirrors and the reactors that they're talking about and how concerned they are about them right now. What are your thoughts on this so far? What do you know about neutrinos and the nuclear power? And their concerns about the reactors and the fault lines, the Georgia Guidestones exploding and then cleaned up the same day. I'm not sad about that at all, but how interesting it is that it's on the 33 degree parallel line. And then in the shape of an X and a sundial, I just think there's a lot more going on than what they're ever going to tell us. So when you hear about missiles or drills being done and different things, I hope you think about the neutrino beams and you think about the magnetic ley lines, and the connections to everything under our feet. And why CERN, Fermilab, the Deep Underground Neutrino Experiments, and all these observatories are searching and hunting neutrinos and the beams that they can put out and how they're trying to find where they're coming from. What is it with the water and these magnetic ley lines, the disclosure and identified flying objects, this neutrino astronomy and neutrino detectors and nuclear reactors and what people have seen around the world is connected. Cosmic rays or CMEs, earth facing coronal mass ejections and the sounds that are in the rocks. And these rocks are connected again to the killing stone in Japan that broke. Then there's the Devil's Rock at Batava, Illinois. The strange magnetic anomalies, the connections with the sun, the plasma, the magnetic anomalies, the neutrinos, another X. What do you think? Thank you for watching till the end. Humongous hugs, high fives, and good vibes always. Never underestimate the power of kindness. Please be kind, and I hope someone's kind to you. Trinity, red or blue pill, hi-ho, come with the frog here. Come with me. 
and you'll see.